All right, in this video, we're looking at the Wilcox and Rank Sum Test. It's a non-parametric procedure that's similar to the independent t-test we learned earlier on in the course. If you remember in the independent t-test, you had two samples drawn from independent populations, and then we wanted to compare those two in some way. So in this case, for this problem, we want to compare, let's say these are long jump distances for a set of boys from a PE class in elementary school, and long jump, long jump distances for a set of girls from a PE class in an elementary school. And we want to compare those distances. We want to see if there's a significant difference between the distances achieved by the boys and the girls. Um, the idea behind this procedure, then, essentially is to make a comparison between two independent populations. And that's what the Wilcox and Ring sum test does for us. It's just the non-parametric version of that. So the independent t-test could have been used if it was, you know, something where we could assume normality. If we can't assume normality, we might try the Wilcox and Ring sum test to be safe. Now, how does this procedure work? Well, the logic is pretty simple in it. We essentially, what we do, since um, non-parametric tests often use ranking procedures, that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to rank the entire set of data as if it all came from one collection or one population, right? So we're going to ignore the fact that it's from two different groups for a moment in the beginning, and we're going to rank all the numbers as if they're just one set of data. And then what we'll do after that, you know, once we have all the ranks, we're then going to separate them again and add up all the ranks that the boy jump distances got, and add up all the ranks that the girl jump distances got, and we'll call those rank totals, for example, T1 and T2. And those will be the totals for those groups. Now, what, what's going to the logic of the test, or what's going to happen, is if the boys ended up jumping much further than the girls, for example, then you would imagine that their jump distances would be the big numbers, and the girls' jump distances would be the small numbers. So when you rank them, all the big ranks would end up in the boys' category, and all the little ranks would have ended up in the girls' category. So when you totaled up these ranks for the two different separate groups, you would tend to see in that case, in that scenario, that the totals for the boy would be much higher than the total for the girls, right? That would be assuming that the girl did, in fact, jump shorter distances than the boys. If the opposite is true, if the girls actually jumped further, then they would have the big ranks, and therefore their rank total would be bigger than the boys' rank total. And of course, that's what the basis of our test. We're going to see if that difference is significant or not, and if it is, then we can say, yes, you know, the boys do, in fact, seem to jump farther than the girls, or vice versa, the girls seem to jump farther than the boys, so on and so forth. So that's the logic of the test. It's a pretty clever idea, right? Rank all the data as if it came from one source, then separate it again, add up the rank totals for the boys, add up the rank totals for the girls, compare them, and see if there's a significant difference, right? Okay, now, there's going to be three ways to make these comparisons. Of course, we're going to have, as always, a left tail test, a right tail test, or a two tail test. So let's look at the left tail test first of all and see how that works. I have an HO and an HA here that talk about the medians, right? So non-parametric tests often to discuss the median location, right? So in this case, basically the left tail test is from this HA statement here, and it says that the median for the first population is less than that for the median for the second population. So in this scenario, what that would be saying is that essentially the boys' jump distances are smaller than the girls' jump di distances, right? Because the median here for the girls would be higher than that for the boys. Now, the test stat for that procedure is going to be this. We're going to use the rank total for the boys, or for the first population, if the sample size for the boys is less than that for the girls. So we're going to be looking at, you know, among here, how many numbers do we have? We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so there's nine samples from, taken from the boys and only eight from the girls. In that case, the boys had a larger sample size. That would mean that the girls would end up being the basis for our test statistic. So that would mean T2 would actually be our test stat, because N2, the sample size for the second group, is less than that for the first group. So that's how you choose which one is your test stat. Okay, and you can use either if the sample sizes are the same. That means you can either use T1 or T2. Now the logic from there is pretty straightforward. It says you should reject the null hypothesis if, and remember, if you're rejecting the null, you're basically supporting HA, the alternative, right? So what is the alternative saying? It's saying that, in fact, the boy's median is less than the girl's median. Well, what kind of evidence would support that? Well, if this was the boy's total, let's say you used T1 as your test stat because the boys, let's say, in theory, if they had a smaller sample size, right, then you would use T1. 
Well, if it's less than or equal to TL, now where does TL come from? These are critical values that are come from a special table in the textbook. In the problem videos, you'll see how we use that table. But so TL is T lower. That's the smaller of the critical values, right? So there's some lower bound, and it's saying if the boy's total is less than that critical number, then you should reject HO and support HA. And this would make sense because what are we looking for in order to support HA? We're looking for small median for the boys, which means a small total. So if it's less than some critical value, in other words, it's too small, in other words, we'll reject HO, support HA. For the other one, it's the same kind of thing. Except for this time, you're using the girls. Now think about it. To support HA, we'd have to show that the girls' total is significantly large. And that's what this is saying. If you're using T2, you're looking for it to be greater than or equal to some critical value. In other words, it's big enough. In other words, bigger than this critical value. We will, again, reject HO, support HA. OK, so that makes sense. Those are the right-tailed scenario. Same kind of thing, comparing medians again. If you're looking at the right-tailed, case, remember that comes from HA, and that would say what? That the boy's total is greater than the girl's total. In other words, not total necessarily, but the median is greater or higher, which would ref be reflected in the ranked totals, right? So either way, if the median for the boys is greater than that for the girls, then we'll use the same rule for the test stat, just like before. If we have a small sample size for the boys, we'll use that total as our test stat. If the smaller sample size is for the girls, we use their total. If they're the same, we use both, right? So that's throughout. So all the test stat decisions are always the same. Now, as far as whether you reject the null hypothesis or not, again, remember, if you're rejecting the null, you're supporting HA. What do you need to have happen to support HA? If this is saying that it's bigger than that, you need to be showing that the boy's total is significantly large, right? So if you're using the boy's value, it has to be greater than the critical value, right? You need to show it's significantly large in order to support HA. Vice versa, if you're using T2, using the girl's total, here we're showing that that total is smaller than the boys, so you need to show that it's significantly smaller, and that's what this is saying. The girl's total rank sum should be less than the critical value, right? If you can show that, then you can support HA and reject HO. And finally, the two-tailed scenario, the last scenario, this is saying, hey, the two medians are the same versus they're just different, right? They're different from one another. Either the boys are smaller or the girls are smaller, right? Okay, so test that, same rule as before, right? And then we reject if, well, what do you have to have, what has to happen in order to support this? Well, we just have to show that there's some, something that's extreme. Either the rank total for the girls is very small, or it's very large, for example, or the boys is very small or very large. So we look at this, T, again, doesn't matter which one of these is, whatever one you choose is gonna be your, your test stat. Either you need to show that it's extremely small, or you need to show that it's extremely large. So it either needs to be less than the critical value or higher than the critical value. If that's the case, you can reject HO and therefore support HA. So it's a really clever test. It's a really nice test, and it's actually not too weak. It's it's um, probably you know say 95% as efficient as the independent t-test. So it's something that you know can be used quite effectively. Of course, because it is in a non-parametric procedure, if you're unable to reject the null hypothesis and you think you probably should have been able to, then perhaps it's due to the weakness of the test. But otherwise, it's an excellent uh, choice can't assume normality.